My name is Richard Barnes and I am a photographer and an artist. And the type of work I do is usually within the context of working within museum collections. Well, I'm interested in collections in general and how people define themselves through collections, whether they be individuals, nations, cities. I don't collect myself. I guess as a photographer, I feel like I'm collecting because I'm collecting images, but I don't tend to form collections in the way that I'm interested in the way that people collect. I started out working on archaeological excavations, and that's what led me to the work that I'm doing today. Yeah, Bill was saying there's about 10, 000, uh, to 10 million years difference between Miocetus and Basilosaurus. Okay. This is this is the latest find, and it's called the Basilosaur. It's 50 feet long. If I have a scientific background or a scientific interest, it's a, it's in sort of pseudoscience. I think raw data doesn't excite me at all. What you do with the raw data, where you take it to, is what's exciting. These are raw data over here. Um, you know, those are images that came out of the archives of the. Um, um, Paleontological Museum, and basically they were done for documentary purposes by technicians, scientists, a century ago. I'm coming to it a hundred years later and I'm looking at it and I'm not particularly interested in the subject. I'm interested a hundred years later in the details of everyday life that are conveyed in the perimeter and the, the margins of those, of those glass plate images. Everything you feel comfortable giving us, yeah. we will take. I do what I do because I have this need to be out in the world, interacting with the world. I mean, other artists work within the studio and they're very comfortable going to the studio. And I early on realized that I wasn't that person. I really needed to be out into the world. But I still needed to create things individually and personally. Uh, and so I started to interact with scientists, and scientists being archaeologists, ornithologists, researchers within the museum context. And hopefully I'm respectful of the scientists that I've worked with, or the ornithologists, or the archaeologists, but I also have my own personal interest, and that's why you see images like these, which are derived from these collections, but they don't look like anything that they would ever approach or ever to talk about in the way that I talk about them. I mean, because we brought it this close to the window, most people's view of this will be from there, except at night. When you're looking All of my work today really is about architecture on some level. Architecture or containment. I, I don't know what it is about the rectangle, the frame within the frame, definition of space, and the containment, and you can extrapolate that and when I look at the museum, the museum is a container of artifacts, is a place of dead objects. 10% of the museum's exhibits, uh, artifacts, objects are on display while 90% lie dormant in the storage below. Well, I love museums. But at the same time, there is this critique that I'm always going through. And because museums are set up for, museums are theaters. And I love the theater. <clears throat> and I love the stage. And I love the artifice of the stage. And the museum, everything is curated, collected, put on display for you. And, dire and you're directed. I like to take you out of that place. I like to bring you behind the proscenium, to take you beyond the stage, to see what's going on behind. When I photograph these dioramas, I mean, I'm struck by the fact that we cull these animals from nature, we bring them back to the museum, and we, we, we reanimate them. So there's this, there's this mutual uh, interaction which is based on an, uh, a lie, if you will, an untruth that, you know, that somehow these animals are actually living on the savanna when actually they've been killed and stuffed and put on display for you. And, and that kind of ambiguity about your place within that um, contract is really fascinating to me. And I really like that quality 
of, an, of, of coming to an image that I may have done and not knowing quite what you're looking at, and then the layering as you begin to decipher it or bring your own experience to it, that's what's really important to me. I think the, probably the most important project that I did, which dealt with that, is I photographed the Unabomber's cabin a few years ago. And so I think your first initial hit is, I'm looking at this very simple, childlike form, but it really feels malignant. I wanted to sort of look at that, you know, not knowing that we all have that image in our mind from a very early age, and just take that kind of simple object and look at it knowing that there's something else going on, or something else went on inside this. And it turns out, yes, it was the home of Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber. And so the image is photographed forensically, if you will. They're like mug shots. Uh, those are the black and whites. The color images I did were a different matter, and that's where I actually went and brought it to another space within the warehouse space, which was completely empty. So it looked like an art gallery. And I wanted to make this connection between this fetishized object, this malignant object, if you will, and the art world. And so I thought, well, that, this is an interesting thing to do because you know, it looks like an art installation. But at the same time, it's a real object in real time, and it's a document. So my work goes back and forth between the documentary and something else. 